Today, we are putting the Siberian Tiger head to head with the Smilodon Fatalis, aka the Saber Tooth Tiger. To find a winner, we will compare things such as weight, height, length, and by force, top speed, competition, prey, hunting habits, and at the end, how it theoretically would play out. Before we move on, don't forget to check the description for sources and credits. Smilodon Fatalis roamed across the North American continent during the middle to late Pleistocene, approximately 700,000 to 11,000 years ago, belonging to the Smilodon genus, the Macarodontinae subfamily, and the Philidae family. Thought to be similar in size to the Siberian tiger, with their body measurements estimated at 350 to 600 pounds, 5 feet long, and 3 feet tall at the shoulder. Smilodon were also thought to have top speeds of 25 to 35 miles per hour and according to studies had relatively weak jaws with only about one third of the strength of a modern day lion. The Smilodon fatalis was quite an interesting looking animal from its long curved canines to its robustly built and muscular frame, an extremely muscular neck, and a short bobcat like tail. But the use of those scary chompers is highly debated, with many different hypotheses, such as Smilodon killing their prey by stabbing and slicing, assuming the main action of the large canines were to strike and gash, leaving prey to eventually bleed out. But these hypotheses had their skeptics stating things such as sabers not being able to withstand lateral pressure which would have surely occurred with the struggling animal. The most plausible theory being that Smilodon would pin down their prey with extremely powerful lower limbs, then go for the jugular, as that could inflict some serious damage as pictured here. According to studies, the limb strength of the Smilodon fatalis far exceeded the strength capability of any extant feline and incredibly even American lions. Studies also revealed that the more experienced the Smilodon was, the stronger it would be as wrestling with large megafauna would build up strength, comparable with people hitting the gym, a feline gym bro if you will. Aside from the bad jokes, another study discovered a parietal impression on Smilodon's skulls that were a consequence of repeated stress on the temporalis muscle, a sign of biting instead of the latter being slicing and dicing. Putting a pause on the fatalities for now, let's take a look at some Siberian tiger stats. Siberian tigers belong to the Panthera genus and the Philidae family, being currently found in Southeast Russia, China, and North Korea. A far cry from their once immense range, with the tiger species as a whole having lost 93% of their historic range. Adult Amur tigers average from 400 to 700 pounds, 11 feet long and 3 feet tall at the shoulder. Tigers, despite their size, can reach up top speeds of 60 miles per hour, but they are not built to run at high speeds for long distances. In addition, Siberian tigers also have jaws capable of exerting a bite force of 1,000 pounds per square inch. Based on that information, it's pretty safe to say that this is pretty evenly matched up from head to toe. Now onto the competition side of things, starting with the Smilodon fatalis. Scientists have been able to use isotopic analysis to accurately depict what prehistoric predators would have preyed upon. Isotope analysis is used universally to understand the flow of energy through food webs as well as being able to reconstruct past environmental and climatic actions. Nowadays, tooth enamel seems to be a better source of accuracy as opposed to collagen, which becomes pretty easily contaminated. As a matter of fact, because of this, it was once believed that dire wolves directly competed with Smilodon and American Cave Lion. But further analysis of tooth enamel rejected that idea. Thanks to research as such, we know that Pleistocene Krugers, Smilodon, and American Cave Lion all had diets that overlapped, thus putting them in direct competition. And to tie what we had said earlier, other predators that would have shared territory with, although not scientifically shown to be direct competitors, would include dire wolves, short-faced bears, cave bears, and cave hyenas. While Siberian tigers are the unquestionable top dog 
in their neck of the woods. Competing with the occasional black bear, brown bear, wolf, and leopard, but scientists have reported as many as four incidents in which brown bears attacked and killed a female and her cubs. In this area, Smilodon seems to have the advantage as they competed with apex predators in comparison to the Siberian tiger, who had little to no competition from any other apex predators. Now on to prey. Because of isotope analysis, as explained earlier, we know that Smilodon diets would have consisted on forest-dwelling animals from a variety of prehistoric and modern-day deer species, camels, platygonas, large-headed llamas, tapirs, woodland bison, and horse species included. The Smilodon hunting habits are still not completely concrete or agreed upon, but as touched upon earlier, the most commonly agreed on hunting method is the hold down and chomp away one. But an article by Scientific American had some really interesting findings, showing that Smilodon who confronted each other had went for bites to the face, as findings of a Smilodon skull with gnarly injuries had appeared to be dealt by another Smilodon. Skulls discovered in Argentina also seem to back this idea further. And to reiterate, none of these ideas are concrete as they are merely hypotheses. The same thing could not be said for Siberian tigers as we know for a fact that tigers are stock and ambush predators, using cover to sneak up on prey, explosively pouncing on the prey animal, targeting the front of the neck or the back of the neck tigers only tasting success on one out of every 10 attempts. Siberian tigers prey primarily on wild boar, sitka deer, red deer, and to a lesser extent small animals like badgers and raccoons, and even brown bears making up 3% of the Siberian tiger's diet. The Smilodon fatalis yet again seems to have the edge as they face much bigger prey animals at around the same body mass. So the big and final question that you guys all been waiting to hear, how would it go down? Reading forums and watching Tiger on Tiger Crime, it's clear that the Siberian Tiger would be equipped with a stronger jaw, agility, and explosiveness in spades. As compared to the smaller Don Fatalis that had a stocky built frame, similar to a bear, accompanied by extremely powerful forearms, giving the Smilodon a clear edge in the strength department. In a scenario where the tiger would emerge victorious, the tiger would use its agility to stay at a distance, carefully picking when to attack. I would imagine targeting the back of the animal's neck and or the front. But tigers may have a different technique of attacking based on whether the animal is a prey or an adversary, possibly shown in these clips here. In the scenario where the Smilodon is victorious, it would have simply overpowered the tiger, rushing or holding the tiger down, gashing it to death, or delivering a devastating skull attack, as mentioned by Scientific American. Overall, the Siberian tiger and the Smilodon fatalis are pretty evenly matched. There is many, many, many scenarios in which this can unfold, let me know down in the comments who would you have winning and in what scenario. Please don't forget to drop your thoughts and comments in the comment section below. See you next time.